Helston is down in southwest Cornwall, a small, small market town of about 12,000 people, um, and has had a very monthly farmer's market since 2008, and really you know, surprisingly successful, I think most producers felt, um, for a place like Helston. But it was all, for, for some reason, it really clicked with people locally. But, um, but we always had a, had a feeling that uh, it would be better for customers and for producers if there was a way of um, a bit being more frequent than, than just every month. And I'd come across um, Stradco uh, and realized that that could be the opportunity that we were, that we were looking for because we couldn't get producers to commit to, to once a month. There were other markets they were attending to. So, um, so Stradco seemed, 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 gave me the idea that we could do something similar in Helston and I had been sort of thinking about it for a number of years, but until my sort of situation changed and wasn't really able to do anything until I had more time this year. And I would I started discussing it with, with the producers before COVID came along. Um, but obviously when it did come along, we had to move a lot more quickly because the farmer's market closed and a lot of those producers had lost their market altogether. So I sort of moved uh, as more quickly than I was expecting to and set up Helston Local Food Hub. Um, we started with some of the farmers market producers, those that were felt able to, to join in or wanted to join in. Initially, there were 10 of them. Um, and, and we sort of set up, so we, we were setting up from scratch with all new procedures, etc. cetera. Um, and we've grown from those original 10 to uh, it says 25 there. I'm not sure I counted that. I think I just sort of guessed. It's somewhere around that that figure um, of 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 producers. Um, we were really lucky in that the farmers, the space that the farmers market in was available to us to rent every Saturday morning, which is when we wanted to do the the food hub, and um, and it was a great it was a great space. And so at the beginning when we um, under the first lockdown, uh, and whilst we were getting our systems in place, we we had a lot of space. We had a huge space to work in, and we had um, we sort of went with family volunteering. So my family sort of volunteered, and um, and another volunteer, his family worked together. So we had lots of people working, but we were able to keep separate in our in our uh, family family bubbles. Um, and we started. Yeah, the, it was the first the first week was. I limited it, I think, to 20 orders. I sort of got caught out. 25 orders went within within 12 hours, and uh, and that was, I think, about uh, 1,200 pounds turnover in that for that first week. And it's quite interesting because really, it's not, it hasn't sort of, it's it's been pretty steady since this is we, this first the first market was in May, and it's been pretty steady since there uh, of around a thousand to to 1250 sometimes it's been been more um and sometimes it's been quite a bit quite a bit less but it's but it's around that that sort of figure and around 25 orders would be would be a would be a sort of average with some very regular customers and um and and a sort of slowly growing number of new customers each each week we get one or, one or two more although interestingly in the last two weeks i've had more new customers i think i've had since than I've had since June, so something sort of something sort of changing there. So we work on a weekly order cycle every Saturday morning. Uh, we close we close the order cycle on a Thursday lunchtime, and every Saturday morning producers bring their produce to the, the old cattle market in Helston. Uh, me and one other person um, pack the orders, and the customers come between course to course to eleven and. 12 o'clock and we um and i have a couple of uh, of collection points in other villages around so just think about what went what went well um and i was yeah start starting from scratch so i lent very heavily on other people and borrowed as much of what i could from other people's processes and procedures strike particularly uh, tamar Ta uh, tamar food hub and others um, really helped me in those in those early days, and I was I was a serial attender every single Zoom meeting that was 
who was going at that time to help me uh, try and get my head around it and to and to make it work well. So those those weekly sport webinars really really helped um, both in the sort of setting up and the procedure stuff, but also in the marketing um, of which I had you know, little experience and no experience of Facebook and things like that. So all the you know, case really helpful uh, webinars were of massive benefits i think to to how we were able to to get going and keep going um we've used that scheduled collection times that the, the uh platform allows us to do and that's um just you know originally just for social distancing i guess that's carried on but it just makes for a much easier and um more more steady and relaxed um time for people to collect there's no there's no real queuing and sometimes you know we have a chance to chat to to, to the customers a little bit as well which, which feels really important um i think the community collection points i've just done a couple uh, on the lizard peninsula one close to my home at the end of the at the end of the day and another one in in one of the larger villages and they've been really uh they've been pretty crucial in some ways and sometimes they've been sort of 50 percent of my of my orders have come from those two communities and uh, so that's been good from my point of view but it's also been good from um from that from the, well certainly during the first lockdown you could see that it was becoming something of a community gathering each week people would get together and they would you know they'd be bringing books to swap with each other and 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 it was sometimes the only time that they would get to see people and, and they would um and in one of my early collection points in mullion you know there were there were a couple they hadn't seen each other for for you know two, two months or something so they they work really well and they, and they feel quite strong and they're sort of growing as well so that's so that's good i think there was a lot of yeah you know, we were i was quite tight on the procedures in terms of mask wearing and sanitizer and, and the general space around that we were that we were able to have at the, at the farmers market where we did the collection point, I think really helped people felt very confident in that um, in that environment and and I suppose that's and that's partly because you know, we, the customer base is comes I think from the farmers market and the demographic is is retired people so people who are probably a little bit more vulnerable. At this time, so a large number of my of my customers are from that from that demographic, and I think that um, the the procedures we put in place were helpful for them in, uh, feeling confident about coming to the to the food hub. Um, more recently, we've done donations to the local food bank, and that's been that's been pretty successful. Really, getting sort of seventy to eighty pounds uh, each each week. And a lot more around around Christmas time. So that's just a one pound or a five pound um, button on the on the uh, on the shop front that people can uh, can donate to. And I think the other thing that really has really helped me along the way has been some big sellers. So um, whilst uh, so well, it's, it's probably principally actually one one big seller. Um, of a uh, Ruby June's Indian cuisine, which is a local uh, curry um, curry maker, and that just has sold really well. And sometimes it's been twenty five percent of my uh, of my sales, and so that's it's, it's quite a significant number. That's, and I guess partly lockdown is you know the the, the pubs uh, have either been closed or people haven't been so keen on going to them. So that's that's really helped, and a couple of established names, and I guess also the having the the base of the farmers market um, has has um, given us a lot of uh, sort of regular um, regular and loyal and loyal customers from from that uh, from those people. Uh, so some of the challenges uh, I think we need to sort of need to grow the customer base. It's not doesn't feel like it's quite it isn't quite big enough to 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 make it really sustainable for the amount of um work that goes in in terms of the the uh the output um or the income coming into the to the business um 
because we started in a bit of a hurry, I never really did any sort of guidelines or standards around what producers should should do. You know, would, are we looking for organic? Are we looking for regenerative farming practices, practices and things like that? And because I was starting with established farmers market producers, I wasn't really able to necessarily to um, to put any guidelines around those. I just sort of grabbed the people that were there, and and I suppose some of the standards around product sourcing, particularly for, so for example, what, what some of the the um, secondary secondary produce where people are making curries or pies or anything like that. I'm not 100% sure where they where they're sourcing all their products and are they sourcing their products locally? And we haven't sort of built a, a structure around that um, yet. And um, and I think we just need to widen the demographic a little bit and, and the reach of the reach of the, of the food hub around Elston. And I've been operating as a sole trader with sort of limited limited resources, so it was basically just me and usually my daughter or my son helping me on a, on a, on a Saturday. So it feels a little bit fragile if um, if I was to go off ill. I have got some volunteers who are able to help, but it's, it it probably doesn't feel particularly um, resilient. Um, going forward and um, I'd like to see some changes there and finally next steps um, I think what I'm wanting to do now is to widen the product list to more everyday items it's kind of based around farmers market quite quite lots of luxury luxury items there less of the day-to-day -day stuff um, I've been talking about it I haven't done anything about it um, but whether we should form a community interest company I think would be pretty valuable and then I could build those guidelines around that and clarify those objectives and, and the values for what we what we stand for and then looking at how do we how do we widen the geographic reach and I'm talking to other food hubs close by and other people thinking there are other people in West Cornwall thinking along the same line so we're looking at how we can how we can reach out a bit further than just Helston and use and scale up really to something that could be bigger and more uh, bigger and therefore more sustainable and and I think the other thing I want to do is to is and again I guess would come around our clarifying our objectives and values but how we sort of partner with with a, a local food bank or other uh, organizations uh, addressing issues around um, food insecurity and things like and things like that which um, would be one of the things I'd really wanted to see out of out of this out of this project but something that beyond the the sort of donation button I haven't been able haven't been able to do but it's early days so we've been running for since May this year and um, and I'm pretty pleased that it's where we've got what we've got so far but need to go a little bit further that's that's my lot okay thanks <laughs>